harassment of women. <laughs> so during my childhood, I spent a fair amount of time sitting in front of the TV and like mindlessly watching cartoons and Disney movies. And I remember the excitement of watching a new episode live. And it always seemed like right as I sat down to start watching it, my mom would yell at me, Caroline, go put the dishes away. Or Caroline, please go clean up your room. It's really getting messy. So I always found myself racing against the clock to finish whatever try I had in the five minute commercial break. And I think my childhood self might even hold the record for the fastest shower ever taken. <laughs> um, one of my favorite TV shows to watch with my two brothers was Looney Tunes. This target audience was children 5 to 11, so naturally I started watching it when I turned 5. Maybe not when I turned 5 per se, but when my older brother turned 5. And his birthday sure felt like my birthday because I made sure every special occasion was always about me. <laughs> so, you know, when he turned 5, I turned 5. Um, we continued watching this, my two brothers and I, until my little brother turned 10, which amounted to about 11 years of Bugs Bunny background noise, which I'm sure my mom loved every single second of. <laughs> Not really, and I'm so sorry, Mom. Um, we loved Looney Tunes because the lab characters, bright images, slapstick humor, and visual gags sucked us into the cartoon universe. However, beneath the seemingly silly plot lines were some not-so-innocent themes I managed to go right over my head. After 11 years of watching, I didn't once stop and think, oh, that's kind of kind of weird. Why are all the female characters dressed in really short shorts? Why are they acting like this? And it wasn't until really, I'm going to say this year, that I realized that they were sexualizing them and treating the women or the female characters as objects. And I know what some of you guys may be thinking, like, Looney Tunes, really? But hear me out. When we were kids, we were just watching it for the silly plot lines and mind-numbing entertainment to pass the time, so it's easy to miss the objectification of the female characters. In this speech, I will discuss how Looney Tunes perpetuates and normalizes the sexualization and harassment of women through the three main characters, Lola Bunny, Daffy Duck, and Peppy Le Pew. So I think most of you guys have an idea of how sexualization has been represented in the media, such as through like Super Bowl advertisements, other commercials, TV shows, and movies. However, for the purpose of my speech, I will be using the definition of sexualization as described by Elizabeth McDade Montez, who has a PhD in clinical health psychology. She has defined it as the process whereby characters are portrayed and treated in an overly sexual manner. Sexualization can occur through conversations, comments, glances, and touches from others, and also in the way in which female characters dress and behave. Some common examples of sexualizing behavior in children's media are female characters wearing revealing clothes, having animalistic behaviors such as crawling around and purring, um, being treated as objects instead of an individual, comments about weight, weight loss, and sex appeal, and unwanted kissing, hugging, and touching. Now, I know you may not think that it's a TV show for five-year-olds, but hopefully by the end of this speech, you'll become more aware of this reality. One of the more obvious examples of this is Lola Bunny. While she is not in the original Looney Tunes TV show, she was a main character in the movie Space Jam, which takes place in the Looney Tunes universe. For those of you not familiar with this 1996 cinematic masterpiece, it follows <laughs> the preparation and final basketball game between two teams. The Toon Squad, comprised of Looney Tunes characters and special guest Michael Jordan, who play against the Monstars, which are a group of aliens who have taken the power from famous NBA players. In Lola's first scene, she is shown walking into the gym. Um, she essentially walks and sways her hips with smooth jazz music playing in the background as she greets the other characters. She's obviously wearing very short shorts and a crop top that exposes her midriff and her, her, midriff and her curvaceous body. Um, she's there to try out for the team and Bugs Bunny immediately approaches her and calls her doll. He falls in love but she says she just wants to play basketball and join the team. After showing off her skills, she goes to Bugs and says, don't ever call me doll, which causes him to become stiff as a board, making an innuendo as if he's a certain male body part, and is excited by her presence and skill. Um, Lola Bunny is easily the best player on the team, besides Michael Jordan. However, <laughs> she's only shown in a sexual light. During the final game, as all of the other characters are entering the uh, gym, the male characters all have a bright spotlight put onto them as they are walking in that fully shows their body. However, when Lola walks in, she gets dim light that shows off only her silhouette. 
Most of Lola's scenes seem to focus only on her body and not her playing ability, even though, as I said, she was the best player on the team and really held them up. This is upsetting because the target audience is children 5 to 11, so it's telling kids that women are purely here for entertainment purposes, especially for male. Lola Bunny is seen as a sexual object through her clothes, walk, and effect on men. The next example I'll be talking about is Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck is a main character on the Looney Tunes TV series and is best friends with Bugs Bunny. His wild temperament, big ego, and pessimistic personality often lead him into comic misadventures. In one unfortunate accident, Daffy Duck finds himself staring down the barrel of a gun. In order to escape this danger, he puts on a ruse and starts to act as a woman. He walks away from the gunman and he starts to sway his hips and put on a little show. He slowly starts to undress himself, first starting with his gloves and then taking off his feather dress. <laughs> Daffy Duck exposes his body to the gunman, gives him a quick kiss on the nose, and swiftly runs out. This is a large implication that all a woman has to do to escape imminent danger is expose her body or flash her attacker. Not only is this sexist and incorrect, it also sets a very dangerous precedent for the children watching. The last character I'll be talking about is Peppy Le Pew. While he's a controversial character on his own for rep representing a French stereotype, he's a French striped skunk with a thick accent and is constantly searching for love, but is usually rejected because of his strong odor. He's constantly seeking love and is shown chasing after girls who want absolutely nothing to do with him and are usually very, very uninterested. While he might seem innocent and a little flirty when you first meet him, he sexually harasses and assaults the female characters he interacts with. Pepe Le Pew refuses to take no for an answer when he, has, when he asks girls out on dates, and when he gets rejected, he continues to follow and stalk them throughout the episode. Pepe Le Pew is often shown pulling women into his arms and try, without their permission and trying to kiss them, even though they are visibly afraid and trying to escape his grasp. This forceful nature is not something that we want children to normalize. This perpetuates the mindset that in order for a man to be funny or romantic, all they need to do is find a woman who's uninterested in him, grab her, and try to kiss her. Unfortunately, he is a common character in the TV series, so kids are constantly seeing this behavior and are subconsciously absorbing ideas and acts of sexual harassment. To recap, Lola Bunny, Daffy Duck and Peppy Le Pew all exemplify the sexualization of women and harassment in the Looney Tunes universe. Lola is a hypersexualized character through her clothing and movements. Daffy Duck sexualizes the female body in order to escape imminent danger. And Peppy Le Pew sexually harasses women and treats them as objects. And why does this matter? At first glance, or maybe after 11 years of glancing at this show, you might not pick up on this toxic depiction of the female characters. However, it's very easy for our viewers to overlook this because they're five to 11 years old. At this age, they're still trying to identify themselves and are easily susceptible to outside influences such as the media, especially TV shows. Viewing sexualized images of women at such a young age risks uh, children, and especially the girls, from growing up to see themselves as an object of desire rather than a fully formed woman with their own curated sense of self. Her entire worldview is defined by how she sees herself, is not defined by how she sees herself, but how others have defined her role for her. She learns that pleasing others and being pleasing to them is paramount to anything else, and this can hinder any self-exploration that might lead her to create a different and authentic definition for herself. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I hope you took something out of the speech and maybe you'll be able to walk away, walk away and recognize some sexualizing behavior in a different